come before you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have back-to-back Sundays with John the Baptist featured in the gospel. Last week it was John actually making his proclamation in the wilderness. This week he's in prison and he's still searching and wanting to, a little confirmation, wanting to make sure I just keep moving around so that the people behind the wreath can see me. <laughs> the people on the, running the cameras are probably not really happy right now. All right, we'll get back to this. Advent, Advent, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, you know, and I think he's, I can relate to what John the Baptist is going through, and I think you probably can too, it's this experience of like, I'm pretty sure I'm on the right course, but I'm not quite positive, did I just miss my turn? I love maps, I don't know about you, and I used to, as a kid, collect maps from different places we went, and I would unfold them as many times until they just kind of fall apart in my hands. I still have paper maps and some atlases at home that I really enjoy flipping through. But I have to say, I'm I'm a huge fan of the uh, navigation apps as well. I'm still a map geek, even though it's all gone digital. I've been caught sitting on the couch while the TV is on, zooming in and out on Google Maps, and yes, in part, to see which route is best by bicycle. I mean, it's really fabulous what you can do with these maps because you can layer on terrain and figure out what the elevation changes. You can figure out which places have uh, bike lanes. Uh, and I, I really, maybe this is an overshare, but I have three different navigation apps on my phone because some are better for traffic and others are better for you know, public transportation and some are better for this and some are better for that. Some play better with the interface on the phone. I don't use, oh yeah, I use all three of them, but mostly I use two, but I just can't let go of the third one. But in all three apps, all three of them, the little voice that tells you what to do is muted. (laughs) I don't like the voice telling me where to turn. And it all goes back to the first time I drove the church van that we owned in Hawaii, and I got on the freeway and it said, uh, you'll turn, your your exit is in one mile. Your exit is in three quarters of a mile. Your exit is in half a mile. Your exit is in a quarter mile. Your exit is in an eighth of a mile. Get ready to exit. Prepare to exit. You're about to exit. Exit now. And the whole time it was talking over an audio book and I thought, how am I supposed to catch up with my books? If this voice is always talking to me, so I figured out how to turn the voice off, and I've been really happy ever since. Occasionally, someone will be riding with me, and they're like, doesn't it tell you where to turn? And and I say, oh, no. (laughs) It tells me in graphic form right there. It shows me. And, And maybe it's because I have the voice turned off. I don't think so. It might be. Occasionally, with all of these maps and all of the wonder and all of the GPS and all of the glory, I still miss my turn now and again. (laughs) Not often, but once in a while. And I find this very frustrating. Maybe it's just me, but periodically it's really unclear. The signage on the road uh, mixes metaphors with what I'm seeing on the map. And it's like, it looks like it's just ahead, but no, it just went by. Maybe I'm driving too fast or too slow. It doesn't really matter. I think sometimes we need a course correction, and sometimes we need just a little bit of an assurance that we're actually going the right way. John the Baptist. John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way for Jesus. John the Baptist came to level the hills and make clear a path that we might see more clearly that it is, in fact, the Messiah who is standing before us as Jesus comes to deliver the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't that great? It was known as the way for many generations before we took up this word Christian, the way. It was the way. It is the way. And we have in John one who prepares hearts, minds, souls still. Even after Jesus arrives, his message speaks to us because it helps us to connect the dots and see how Jesus is the fulfillment of many prophecies and much expectation. And we are to listen and pay attention to Jesus in new ways. John comes and still 
even when we're pretty sure we're on the right track, we still need that little bit of assurance sometimes, don't we? And John, John, even in prison, reaches out through his disciples for a little confirmation to know that he had done the right thing, that he had laid the coursework for the right person. And, that, and maybe it's not just for John, maybe it's also for those who had seen the truth in John and they needed some affirmation to know, yes, we're, we're on the right track and we're to continue to follow this man, Jesus. The confusion in part, I think, comes because some of what Jesus does departs from what our own expectations of what a Messiah would be, departs from it because it's less law-bound and more love-bound. And it is a truth that is sometimes difficult for us not only to believe is true, but also to follow. And so we need a little confirmation. And I, I just love the answer that Jesus offers these followers of John that come to confront and ask about, are we on the right path? Instead of saying, yes, I am he. Congratulations, you're on the right path. Jesus instead uses the things that are happening to be the answer. The blind are given new sight. The sick are healed. The dead are raised. And I think probably in our own pursuit of faith, of the way, the truth, and the life, the signs that emerge before us probably speak volumes more than any single yes, Jesus is the way, could do for us. Maybe you see it so clearly yourself. Still, though, I mean, we, we still need this affirmation at times, right? So I, I don't know. I, with that, that whole navigating our faith thing, right, if we're to think about the app, sometimes... This is why I have three apps on my phone. Sometimes Google's wrong, right? Or sometimes you still need to stop and, and ask somebody for directions. Or you pull up to the place, have you, maybe you've had this experience, you pull up to the place and you're like, I know I'm in the right place. All three apps tell me so. But this doesn't look like the place I'm supposed to be at. And we need to seek some additional affirmation in some form or fashion. And may we collectively be blessed periodically with the voice of God. There's no mute feature for that one. It finds its way to us in small ways and grand ways as well, sometimes speaking directly to us, but more often speaking through our tradition. And maybe you'll hear the voice of God guiding you this season in the hymns that we sing towards the truth, the way, and the life of Jesus. Maybe, maybe you'll hear some affirmation that you are on the right course, the right way, the right path through the prayers that we offer. Maybe you will know that you're on the right path when you arrive at a place and you see a familiar friend and a smile emerge before you because they're happy to be able to sit together and enjoy a moment in the presence of God. Maybe all of these things at various times come to pass that we might be assured that we are, in fact, on the right path, the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus. Whether we've hit mute on that voice or not, we don't need three different apps to get here. We'll find our way to the heart of the thing, as these sacred seasons merge together, we find the words of the prophets have guided us here. The truth of the sacraments and the scriptures have affirmed that we are, in fact, at the right place. Maybe, maybe we'll just know it in our hearts that we've arrived with Jesus, if only for just this moment. Amen.